I don't know how to start, but um, maybe Ali and Haidar uh, spoke about how much it's important for us that we meet here. And maybe you don't know how much it's really important. I actually came to see Haidar. I didn't dream that I will meet with Haidar after two years because of the siege. And uh, I hope this conference, separated in the past to gather in the future, will gather all the Palestinians, also those who are sitting here, and um, who can come and stay together in one state. I'm Lubna Masarwa. I'm Palestinian from 48. Some call us Arab Israelis. Some call us Palestinian Israelis, but we are the Palestinians who left in Israel, what called Israel in 48. In the last four years, I used to work with Al-Quds University and to focus in education rights for thousands of Palestinian children who don't have schools, who don't have a seats in the schools. I was active and still with Al-Bustan Committee Against House Demolition in East Jerusalem. I'm active in Sheikh Jarrah, I'm active in the West Bank, Belain, Masara, Nalin and other areas. In the last two years I had the chance also to work with Palestinian Iraqi refugees who exiled for their fourth time from Iraq after the war. And of course in the last two years I had the chance to go to Gaza with the uh, boats to break the siege with the Free Gaza Movement. I've been in Gaza twice and the, la the other two times I was arrested. One in the last year in the spirit of humanity and the second time was this one after the Mabi Marmara. I should say that Gaza is far away from my home only one hour but we are not allowed to get in there. I was flying to Cyprus and sailing 20 hours to Gaza and when I arrived I saw Ashdod city in Israel and I was shocked because only then I recognized how unrealistic is our life and how separated we are. But the visit in Gaza helped me to understand the siege as a policy. It's not only about Gaza. The siege is a policy that was used before in Beirut, it was used in Iraq, and it's used in Palestine in different areas. Gaza is under siege, the West Bank is under siege, East Jerusalem is under siege, and the Palestinian 48 is under siege. The difference with Gaza, that in Gaza it's hermetic siege. And this is how is the situation, when the wall will be accomplished in the West Bank, this is the situation going to be. Haider actually didn't see his sister in Bethlehem for more than six years. Bethlehem away from Gaza, maybe one hour driving. Mazin Kumsiya can see Jerusalem from his house, but he can't go to Jerusalem. A German or a tourist can come from the U.S. or Germany and can visit the Holy Land. Palestinian kids in the West Bank can see the sea and the beach from the roof, but they never visited or see or had the chance to go to the sea. Sometimes I, I really think it's a question of luck where you born. If you're born in Gaza, or you're born in Stuttgart, if you're born in Palestine, or you're born in Sweden. And this is will design your life, your freedom, and your dreams. Palestine, Palestine is not only the West Bank. Palestine is 48, Palestine is Gaza, Palestine is East Jerusalem that was isolated from the rest of the West Bank by the wall, and Palestine is the refugees. Palestinians in Israel were ignored all the last years from 
the map from talking people don't know about Palestinians in Israel. They don't know that there is one million and two hundred thousand Palestinians who are the citizens of the Israeli state and living in, in equal rights, in discrimination. The Palestinian Authority in the negotiations don't think even about 48. We are not part in planning the solution of Palestine. We are not considered there. And international communities usually when they speak about Palestine, they speak about the West Bank and they ignore other groups, Palestinians 48 and refugees. But I must say, I, I work now in the parliament actually, in the European parliament, I'm lobby for the Palestinian cause. I'm accounting the days to finish there and to go back home because it's going so slow that doesn't fit the events and the way things happening in Palestine. But I was uh, trying to bring the issue of Palestinians 48 and to invite uh, Hanin Zobi, the Knesset member, who was in the Mavi Marmara to speak. I go to the Palestinian delegation in the European Parliament to make event. They say no. We can't discuss any question about Palestinian Israelis. It's regarding to the Pal to Israeli delegation, it's not our business. I go to the Israeli delegation, the Israeli delegation will block any discussion about what they call the Palestinian minority in 48. This is why in the last two years, in every diplomatic delegation, in every uh, international uh, delegation that coming to Palestine, it's important to see also 48. It's important to see the wall between Kisaria and between Yusri Zarka, Palestinian Israeli uh, village, and to see the wall between Ramle and between uh, near Tzvi uh, Israeli village, to separate between these villages. It's important to see Palestine as one piece. It's important to see all of the pieces that Israel is trying to divide. And it's actually very hard for me to identify myself when they're asking me, are you 48, are you 67, are you 2000 or whatever? I'm a Palestinian. And I'm not going to give up for none of these pieces of Palestine. And also this is why I was, it was very important for me to organize the Palestinian delegation from Israel to be in the Mavi Marmara and to put them in the map. And I think the freedom of Lutela not only succeed to put Gaza in the table, but actually people start asking who is Hanin Zabi. Who is Muhammad Zidane? Why Hanin Zabi was attacked this way in the Israeli Knesset? And I think it's opened, hopefully, a new door to look at what's going in Palestine. Israel treating the Palestinians in Israel such as a big threat and a demographic threat. The historian Benny Morris actually wrote in Haaretz a few years ago that Israel did a big mistake when they didn't exile all the Palestinians from 48. Israel has passed many laws to limit the rights of Palestinians. It's not, it's not new. This law is going from 48 and continue, but the last two years we face a very aggressive uh, a wave of discrimination laws. And I want to go back here to my friend Ali Abu Nama. Ali Abu Nama spoke today about students in Safad who are not allowed to uh, live, uh, to rent houses in Safad. It's a very normal action actually. I want you to know that when I was a student, I get into maybe 20 Israeli uh, flats to rent a house and none of them agreed. And even sometimes I said my name is Livana and not Lubna and they said come 
and when I come to sign the contract, no, I'm sorry, I can't. But I, what I want you to know, Ali, that it's, it's actually becoming a law in Israel that not allowing Palestinians to, um, to rent or to buy houses in, in uh, Israeli uh, cities. <coughs> there are now 695 communities in Israel where Arab citizens of the state are forbidden to live. October 2010, the Knesset Constitution's Law and Justice Committee approved the second and the third reading of the proposed admissions committee's law, 2010, which would permit state-owned committees to form admission boards to vet new residents, which it means 695 Israeli villages, they call it kibbutz and mushav, plus 40 towns will have committees to decide and to make a criteria who will be able to live in the cities and who will not. And this law targeting the Palestinians. Palestinians will not be able to buy house or to rent house because this committee have the right to actually decide if you are suitable or not. And if without law you're never suitable, so with this new law it will just have the legal uh, a, a legitimacy. Another law, Israel is going to, to make a, privis, a privatization in the lands. Lands that on to the state of Israel will pass to the National Israeli Fund, the Karen Kayemet. Most of the lands of the, uh, that the authority of Israel or the state of Israel have, <coughs> that legally they're not allowed to not give the Arabs this land. So their way is to move this land from their authorities to Israeli National Fund. This is well, the Israeli National Fund will not, is not giving any Palestinians any, uh, to own lands or anything else. Another law that I want to mention here, and I have, as you see, many laws, and it's very hard where to start and what to say and what important and what less important. I will speak uh, about civil and political rights. And to mention that, Israel in 2008 proposed for a new law to revoke your citizenship if you do any action against the state, the Jewish Israeli state. And of course, I think all the international community heard lately about Israel talking all the time about Jewish democratic state. Not only this, that they will revoke your identity, your citizenship, and Israel can decide. There is nothing called, it's a very huge uh, 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 word. Uh, anything you will do, it will be an excuse for Israel to revoke your citizenship. They want to make it legally that if I maybe come to speak here in Stuttgart and I speak against Jewish state, I may risk my citizenship. And actually in the last time I was arrested, they suggested to me, give your citizenship and you'll be free from the prison, otherwise we will keep you here for forever, for 20 years. And they suggested that for other of my colleagues. Now it seems like it's crazy, but these laws are running now in the Knesset. And very soon these laws will become a fact. Actually, Lieberman ran his campaign in the election with saying, no citizenship without loyalty to the state. It was a campaign, everyone thought it's just in the air. Lieberman now is the, minister, the foreign minister of Israel, 